Case number 21 CF 1848 appearances, please. Zach Wichow. Sir, state your name for the record, please. I'm here as a third party intervener in the matter, in this matter, as authorized representative for my client. I accept for value and return for value all of the charging instruments in this matter and make my exemption available for discharge of all obligations and charges connected with this case. I do not dispute any of the facts in the charging instruments. And for the record, I do not consent to or agree to being called that name that you have identified here today. The record should reflect that the individual known to this court as Daryl Brooks is present in person in custody in street clothes, specifically a suit and tie and a mask. Um, I just also want to make a record quickly that um, a number of documents were left by Mr. Brooks in the holding area uh, just outside the courtroom. They have been put on his desk today. It's all of the autopsy protocols that were provided to him yesterday, the hard copies, that is, uh, the diagrams that were uh, presented in court related to those protocols, and a copy of the pretrial offer. So I just wanted to make that record. Hold on. I'm not going to address any preliminary matters at this point. I've already addressed uh, a number of things yesterday. The jury is to be brought out. No, it, it was some things that need to be discussed about the paperwork from yesterday. Um, we'll take that up on a break. You can look over it. You can make a note and pass it to I've my already, I've clerk. already looked over it, Your Honor, with all respect. I think there's some things. Mr. Brooks, need. I'm not going to deal with it right now. It it's paperwork. I just wanted it notated that you left it, and now it's being provided not, to you talking, again. I'm not referring to that paperwork. I'm not right. dealing with the paperwork from the clerk of court's office either. I am not the custodian. We're going to bring the jury out. Okay, but she should, Mr. Brooks, she should know that she's trying Mr. to Brooks, get me I, to pay. Stop. I am not addressing it. it. It has to be addressed. All right, I'm going to take a quick break and make sure the jury is ready. And if we'll I don't, if I don't address it now. All right, thank you. The jury can come on out. So we're not going to address the civil matter? No. I was told to pay for something under a civil statute. Mr. Statute. Brooks, I am not the custodian. Bring it up with the clerk of court. How I'm not addressing it. Up it. With the clerk of court. She, how, how am I supposed to do that? So that makes me wonder is what's being if it's a Mr. Civil Brooks, case. the jury's coming out. I'm not going to address your request for open civil, records. If it's That's, civil, I'm not the custodian be, of the records, who's sir. Being sued? My sister trust is being sued. <sighs> Civil Mr. Brooks, civil this is an irrelevant matter that you're attempting no. to bring up in the presence of the was, jury. Their record should not, reflect these interruptions. The jury came out, Your Honor. You and I told that. you I wasn't going to address it. Please. Okay, so it's a civil matter. How, who's being sued? My sister trust? Because I, how can I be Mr. Sued? Brooks, it, you're talking about an irrelevant matter between you and the it clerk of court. It wasn't irrelevant so, when I got the paperwork from the clerk of court. So I was Mr. Brooks, to it. I'm not going to address it. The jury will so disregard I'm, I'm these irrelevant this is a civil comments. Matter? We haven't addressed subject matter. All right, matter thank you, everyone. Please be seated. The jury so will disregard the statements matter. Mr. Brooks is making about subject matter jurisdiction. They are a misstatement of the law. Yes. No, All right, not. and just like this is a civil case. Mr. Brooks, the jury's here. Please like show respect and decorum. According to this um, document, this is a Mr. Civil Brooks, case. please stop. Which means someone is being sued. Civil is a suit. Mr. Brooks, you're talking about an irrelevant matter. I have the I'm starting the trial. Of course, right here that says it's a civil matter. Mr. Brooks so has nothing to do with My this case. Trust is being sued. I have no idea what you're talking about. So I, I got the paperwork right here. All right, I'm going to excuse the jury right about. now, given this disruption. I'll rise for the jury. This should be properly addressed before the jury even comes out. That's why I tried to properly address it before we even went on the record. Mr. Brooks, stop. I'm not going to. This is. You are. Not I'm being respectful to this proceeding you, or to with this respect, jury. No, it's not due with respect, all due respect all stating due respect, that doesn't make it respectful. I was this paperwork by you, Mr. Brooks. Monica Pass. Stop talking till the jury court. is out. Okay, Thank you. So why couldn't we address this before they came out? I'm that not going time, to address it. That bottom was the line. time to address it though. We're supposed to do all the all the addresses before the jury comes out, before we start the matter. Please I was be seated. Trying to simply address paperwork that was given to me. By you, Your Honor. That states Mr. That Brooks, 
It's faced in You have interrupted me matter. repeatedly. You are on the verge of being removed to that courtroom. I don't want to do on that. What, I want you to stay here. But you law, keep Honor. interrupting me and bringing up irrelevant matters. I told you yesterday as a courtesy that was provided to you so that you would frankly not complain that you didn't get it as quickly as possible. Okay, I am not the custodian of the records. If you have an issue with what was provided to you, how it was provided to you, then take it up with the clerk of she court. But from you. now on, I am not going to be the messenger and give you documents that you request to the custodian of the records or from the custodian of the records. They will simply have to be delivered to you at the jail. But that is in response to your discussion or whatever we want to call it this morning. I'm not taking it up. Issue. All right. It is irrelevant. It, it needed to be noted for the record. It doesn't need it to was, be noted, sir. All right. The jury's me, coming back out and I'm going court. to warn you, if you bring this up again, I will pause and I will remove you to the next courtroom for being disrespectful, for being interruptive, for being disruptive and for bringing up irrelevant matters in front of this jury. You will forfeit your right to be present for the direct examination of this witness. I object to did that, you Honor. hear what I said? No, sir? I did not. I, I object to that, Your Honor. Well, you can and object and your objection is noted. But if you interrupt record, when this jury comes the out, they will go. I will rem I will have them taken out again and you will be removed to the next for courtroom. The, you can't. What is the legal basis for that ruling, Your Honor? Illinois versus Allen, sir, and all of the and, other cases that I've cited previously. Anything, I'll make the appropriate record. Stop interrupting me. The jury's coming out. We're continuing with this trial despite your repeated efforts to disrupt. That's Yesterday, sit down. Record. Yesterday alone, sir, 17 interruptions, not including the opportunity that I gave you where you spent 50 minutes, okay, discussing what were primarily either irrelevant or baseless accusations and requests not based in law or fact. I was abundantly patient with you yesterday. And you still have to and, verify by proof any of what and I said. None of that is required, sir. Because and it is. You can't verify your belief. Proof. That that's the, the law the doesn't make it so, Mr. Brooks. Your belief that these are legitimate legal positions they doesn't are. change the law and doesn't make it so. It, it, it's so really again, relevant because you didn't want. To I'm going it. to step off and give Mr. Brooks five minutes to cool off, and I'm when not, that I, happens, I don't I'm bringing cool the jury I'm not, I'm out, not angry at and all. then we will I just wanted continue. To, I don't. Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. Once again, not addressing the subject matter jurisdiction yet again. I'd like to direct your attention to Sunday, November 21st of 2021. Did you attend the Waukesha Christmas Parade that day? Yes, I did. Were you alone or with other people? I was with my family. Overruled. Could you say that again? I was with my family. Can we please put up for the jury uh, exhibit number 15, which has previously been received and published. Overruled. Could you draw a little X for us, um, if you can find where you were standing with your family? Objection. Overruled. Do you want me to go up and touch the map? Is that oh, the or? screen in front of you. I'm sorry. The screen in front of you is okay. a touch screen. You can use your finger. Sure. Okay. Overruled. I would be right, basically right there. It's a, obviously a diagram of the intersection we're talking about. Do you recognize this intersection? Objection here, sir. Overruled. Yes, I do. Do you recall what happened at approximately 4.39 p.m. that Sunday afternoon? Objection. Overruled. Yes. Can you tell us? Sure. I could see a vehicle traveling at a much faster rate than any of the other participants, so clearly something was wrong. Did you describe the vehicle for us? I could see that it was a uh, red Ford Escape SUV. What happened next? Um, as I got closer, I could hear something which I didn't know if it was like the engine sputtering or I didn't really know what it was. It was, again, traveling at a high rate of speed. I was concerned at that point in time um, that either there's some sort of mechanical issue with the car possibly, or maybe some parade participant was having a medical emergency, but the, clear, the vehicle was clearly not under control in relation to everything else that was going on. How close did the SUV get to you? 
very close, probably maybe 10 feet away at most. Were there parking spaces in front of you where you were standing? I, be I believe there were, yes. Do you recall if the vehicle passed through the parking spaces in front of you at all? Objection, relevancy. Overruled. Yes. How good of a look did you get at the driver? A very good look. Okay. Can you describe, or did you? can you give us a physical description of what you remember? I remember the driver being uh, a light-skinned male black, approximately 30, mid-30s, mid to late 30s, um, had very facial hair and um, what I would describe as like dreadlocks, longer <coughs> hair, longer hair. What was the driver doing as he passed you? Objection, hearsay. Overruled. Uh, as he was driving by, he uh, the window was open. He stuck his head and actually like the upper portion of his body out the driver's window and looked back behind him. He actually stuck his head out the window. Objection, leading the witness. Overruled. He may answer. Correct. Uh, to the point where I briefly. It crossed my mind he actually may fall out. That's how far out I perceived him to be. Where was the, what direction was the driver looking when he stuck his head out the window? He was looking behind him. From the direction that he had come from? Correct. Correct. What happened next? Um, at that point when he, when he looked back and then he kind of turned towards the front, uh, Based on his body language, um, my heart kind of sank because I felt like what I thought could be maybe a medical emergency or something like that. To me, it clearly uh, I felt like it was an intentional act, so that obviously upset me a little bit. And um, then the driver, after he had leaned back, he turned forward, he grabbed the steering wheel, he pulled himself up off the seat and cranked the steering wheel to the right. So let the record reflect that the witness used both hands <coughs> at the 10 and 2 position to simulate the driver's hands on the steering wheel. Objection to that. Um, overrule, the record will reflect. <coughs> what happened as the driver cranked the steering wheel to the right? Unfortunately, when he did that, he essentially steered the vehicle across the parade route at a diagonal angle directly through um, a group of people that were walking with the Catholic, sorry, the uh, Catholic community of Waukesha. Based on your memory of where those people were in the road and the SUV's path of travel, what would have happened if the SUV had simply maintained a straight path instead of veering to the right? Objection, speculative. Um, overruled, he may answer. I believe that there was a gap between where the Catholic community from Waukesha was standing and the, the parade um, spectators. So there should have been an open alleyway if he would have went straight. What happened next? Unfortunately, when he drove through that group, um, he struck many of them, a lot of them kind of bouncing off the hood. and. Um, some of them, unfortunately, actually ran over. I could see them kind of, people come out from underneath the vehicle. Did you at any point see the vehicle slow down? Objection. Speculative. Overruled. No, not at all. Let me know if you recognize what you're looking at after you watch it, okay? Objection. Here to say. Overruled. Okay. Do you recognize that clip? Yes. What does it depict? Uh, that depicts the uh, red um, Ford Escape traveling through the closed parade route. Move Exhibit 133 into evidence and ask to publish. Um, overruled Exhibit 133 is received. Permission to publish is granted. Could you just tell us which part of the screen does the SUV enter? Objection leading the witness. It overruled. It enters from the right side of the screen and progresses across to the, essentially, kind of the left side of the screen. Okay, let's play this once then. Why was it playing so fast? <coughs> Is that normal speed? Um, Mr. Brooks, it's not your time to ask questions. Do you see the vehicle um, changing position in the road towards the end of that video? Oh. We go back to the six second mark. 
projection. It's the relevancy to keep going back. Can you draw on the screen the approximate area where you would have been standing at this time? I would have been somewhere down in that area. Okay. So the sidewalk running kind of up the middle of the screen here, that'll run into Maple? Yes. And then you would be on the other side of Maple? Yes. Um, overruled. Do you know what side of the street this camera is on, north or south? This uh, overruled, yes. If you knew. This camera would be on the south side of Main Street. Okay, we're at the three second mark. Do you see the SUV that you've been talking about in the video right now? Objection lead the witness. Overruled. Yes. Let's play again at 40% from that spot, three seconds. What did you see the, the taillights of the SUV doing in the last few seconds of that video? Objection, what's the relevancy? Um, overruled, he may answer. I didn't see the taillights on as far as like brake lights. I didn't see any brake lights. But the uh, <coughs> the rear facing lights were illuminated in some way, correct? Objection, the witness. Sustained. Please. Tail lights, not brake lights. <coughs> oh, please rephrase. Sure. Did you see any lights on the back of the vehicle? Yes. Which ones? Tail lights. What did you see the taillights doing in that portion of the video? Objection, the witness. Overruled. The taillights were on. But the position of the vehicle, did you see that change? Objection, being the witness. Overruled. I did not. You testified earlier that you thought there might be some type of mechanical issue. Did you maintain that opinion? No. Why not? Objection. Speculative. Overruled. There was no panic. There was no um, distress, like he was trying to stop the vehicle. Um, in fact, he seemed to me like he was excited about what he was doing. This is a 16 second clip. We're just going to play um, the first seven or eight seconds for you. That's good. We played six seconds. Do you recognize that video? Do I recognize the vehicle in the video? Yes. Yes. Jackson, that wasn't the question, Your Honor. Um, overruled. What happens to Main Street as you go west of where you were standing? Jackson, being the witness. Overruled. <coughs> uh, approximately a block to the west, the road takes a sharp turn to the left or south. You testified earlier that the driver's window was down when it passed you, is that correct? Yes. Does this video accurately depict uh, how the SUV looked, including that window, at the time you saw it? Objection. Speculative. The window was open. Um, overruled. Go ahead. Yes. I move exhibit 134 into evidence and request permission to publish. Objection. Hearsay. The objections overruled. Exhibit 134 is received. Permission to publish is granted. Do you recognize this exhibit? Yes. What is it? That's the uh, red SUV that I saw on the parade that day, and that's the uh, driver that I saw driving the vehicle that day. I move exhibit nine into evidence and request permission to publish. Objection. Speculative. Exhibit nine is received. Permission to publish is granted. What did you do after the SUV drove out of your field of view? Um, stepped out into the road. I looked to my left, to my right, in each direction. I would estimate probably 12 to 15 people in each direction that were lying in the road in various positions. So I, it happened upon two people. Um, one was an adult male, um, and then one was a small child, probably 8 to 11. Um, the adult male was conscious, was lying on his side. Um, I think I believe it was the right side of his head on the ground. Um, he complained that he couldn't move his legs. Um, and then the young girl uh, was unconscious. She was laying on her stomach face down with her head tucked 
essentially down underneath her, like onto her chest essentially. I recognized that they were, she was not getting good quality breaths. They didn't want to hurt her more by moving her. Um, but I convinced them that she's not breathing appropriately right now. We have to move her carefully so that she can have an opportunity to breathe. So did you? Yes. Did you help anybody else with uh, the group that you've identified as the Catholic communities? Objection answered. Overruled. We worked together then to help at least one other person um, into the back of a sheriff's squad that had come on onto the parade route to try to help get people to area hospitals. What type of vehicle was that? Um, it was a mark. Um, there's been an objection. It's not speculative. Right. The witness may answer. Go ahead. Okay. Um, it was a marked uh, Waukesha County Sheriff's uh, SUV. What happened next? Um, by that time, there was a lot of medical equipment that was arriving on scene. I know there was a long board that we tried putting some of the victims on, um, but the long board wouldn't fit in the back of the uh, SUV. So we ended up using like a makeshift stretcher out of a blanket, and then we carried one of the victims into the back of the uh, sheriff SUV. And then um, the officer who was with me from Franklin, he actually rode with her in the back, or the female victim, uh, and went to a area hospital. Do you recall the first name of that female victim? I believe it was Marisol. M-A-R-I-S-O-L. Objection, legal meaning. It's a clarification. Legal oh, overruled. Yes. Any questions for this witness, sir? Yeah. That's a yes? Yes. All right, go ahead. Uh, are you, would you happen to be on duty today, right now, if you weren't testifying? <coughs> yes. And so right now, you, would it be fair to say that you are on the clock? Yes. So on the clock, would, would it be fair to say that you're getting paid right now? Yes. Would that be uh, for your testimony or just because you would be on the clock otherwise? These would be my normal work hours right now. So you're being paid to testify right now as we speak. Objection. Grounds. Asked to answer. Grounds. Um, he may answer. Yes. Any idea why you would be getting paid to testify? Because these are my normal work hours. This is when I'm working and I've been subpoenaed by the state to be here. So the state's paying you to testify? The city of Franklin is paying me. To testify? These are my normal work hours. So testifying in uh, open court is uh, part of your duties as an officer? Yes. So you've done this more than just this time then, that, would that be fair to say? Yes. And each time you were paid to do so? Yes. You, you may mention to the state of Wisconsin. Um, is that who you were subpoenaed by? Yes. Do you recall by whom? No. You you were in fact subpoenaed though. Would that be fair to say? Yes. So would it be fair to say that upon being subpoenaed, you you were in touch with the state of Wisconsin? Specifically, the Waukesha County DA's office. Do you recall who those interactions were with? Not specifically. So it would be fair to say you, you had an interaction with the uh, <coughs> Waukesha County District Attorney's office, but don't recall who you spoke with? I spoke with a group of people from the DA's office. Do you remember <coughs> anyone by name? One of, the, one of the people was the um, the gentleman at the, at the table. Let the record reflect that uh, the witness made a hand gesture towards the prosecution table and identified attorney which out. Objection. The record will so reflect. 
did you uh, seek to testify in any way? I don't understand the question. Were you were you actively seeking to testify? Like, did you on your end? Did you reach out and volunteer testimony? After the incident, I did complete a report of what I saw that day and gave it to the Waukesha uh, Police Department. So after after that uh, report that you submitted, um, you didn't follow up on what was happening in the, in, in the, the matter at, at that point? No. After you gave the report on the incident, you just went back to work and continued your normal duties. Would that be fair to say? Yes. Did you follow much in the aftermath of the, the matter at that point after you submitted your report? Not really. You made reference at one point to, um, well, let me back up. Were, was today the first time you ever saw those uh, exhibits, the videos and steel frame photo? No. So you've seen that before today? Yes. Um, do you recall who you were shown them by? The, um, the, the yes, same, table, yeah. Same attorney? Yes. Let the record also reflect that, again, he's made a right hand gesture to the prosecution table and identified as attorney with child. Again. No objection. Record will still reflect. What position were you in when you observed what you said as the driver hanging out of the window and you being concerned that possibly they would fall out? And where, where were you positioned at at that time? I would have been standing on the south side of Main Street, just west of Maple, by a few feet. Do you know of any reason why the, the exhibits are not depicting what you say you saw? That portion of the video only co covers from a distance where I was. It would have been the very tail end of that when it's going to the west. That video is probably from several hundred feet to the east of where I am. So, Several hundred feet? How, how would you estimate that distance? Just, a, I know where that video was taken from and where I was standing. That's, that's an estimate of about how far. And you know that for sure? It's an estimate. So, it would be fair to say you don't know for sure. Objection. Grounds. Sustain. Grounds for sustain, Your Honor? Argumentative. From the position that you said that you would have been positioned at, would it be fair to say that the vehicle passed that position pretty quickly? Yes. So how were you able to get a look at the driver if it passed your position quickly and we can see lots of people standing in that position? When the vehicle passed by me, it was... The vehicle at that point in time was a threat to me and my family, so I was very focused on what was going on very focused and it passed directly in front of me about 10 feet away so all my attention was directly on that vehicle and you saying it passed 10 feet 10 feet in front of you approximately yes does this uh exhibit that was just shown depict what you are saying now that it passed 10 feet in front of you yes so can we pull that back up do you want it played from a certain well, spot? I, I'll get to that. Just so we're clear for the record and for the jury, your position would be somewhere in here as you testified. Would that be fair to say? Correct. But can we pull that X down? Hold on. He was oh. let him finish. He was you Okay. Him. Okay. Given, given the angle of this, it's very hard for me to show precisely where I am. It's a little, it's like as far down here as possible. It, it's not right, it's not like any of these people here. It's actually, because this, this is still, all this video here is still on the east side of Maple. I am on the west side of Maple. So when I put an X here, I am essentially, I'm gonna call it way down there, several hundred feet. I'm not any of these people pictured. Does that make sense? Um. 
No, it actually doesn't, but I was referring, so I probably had it a little coming this way. So by what you're saying, you would have been approximately in this area. Would that be fair to say? Uh, yeah. Object to the annotation. The witness drew twice now where he was and I think adequately explained it. Ground. Um, I'm going to sustain the objection and uh, direct Mr. Brooks to have the witness put where the area that he was in. Would it be fair to say that you can see, I guess it would be some type of lights from the vehicle that passed, would that be fair to say? Yes. Where you can see those lights at, that, were, that you just said that you can see, and the position that you drew yourself to be positioned in, you would estimate that that's 10 feet? Yes. Oh, I'll object and move to strike. I think this is a misleading question. We're at the beginning of the video. Those tail lights are not the vehicle in question. Where did the tail lights come from then? Um, a different vehicle. Oh. So would it be fair to say that they Hold on, there's been an objection. There's been an objection. I believe the question mischaracterized the evidence. So strike the question, strike his response. With all the people in that general vicinity, would that in any way be hard for you to focus on if you could actually see who was driving the vehicle? No, when I gave the description, the vehicle was right in front of me and there was nobody in my way. Did you move closer to the vehicle or did you move back from the vehicle? What did you do at that point when you noticed that the vehicle was approaching your position? It happened very quickly. I don't know that I moved in any direction when the vehicle came by. So to your recollection, you pretty much stayed where you were at? Yes, it happened very quickly. So it would be fair to say that it was, well, let me back up. What, what will you define as very quickly? A few seconds? Yes. And in the few seconds you were able to see the driver of the vehicle hanging out of the window and almost falling in and, and doing all that in just a few seconds? Yes. In those few seconds, you were able to see, from your recollection, you were able to see the driver of the vehicle hanging out of the vehicle, you being concerned that the driver would possibly fall from the vehicle, notice that the driver was looking back and continuing to drive in a straight line. You witnessed all this in a few seconds. I would not say continue to drive in a straight line. All the rest of that, yes. You, you witnessed all that in a few seconds? Yes. You made a uh, reference to the make and model of the vehicle. How, how were you able to determine that in just a few seconds? Given my job, I, I know different makes and models of vehicles, so I'm positive on the make and model. So would you would you know the make and model of pretty much any vehicle that would pass you on a on a street? Most, yes. Most, but but not all. Some of the newer vehicles look very similar. Some might be a little difficult, but I'm very confident in that vehicle description. You may mention to some mechanical problems. You believe that there may have been some uh, mechanical problems. How were you able to come to that determination? That was my initial concern because of the noise that the engine was making. It wasn't a normal engine noise. The RPMs were revving much higher than normal. Upon hearing that, from your recollection, you thought because of that sound that there had to be some mechanical problems going on with the engine. I thought that there could be. But it was your first initial thought, correct? Correct. And you were able to to hear that sound and come to a conclusion that possibly there were mechanical issues 
all in a few seconds. A lot runs through your mind at that point in time. Yes. And would it be fair to say because depicting from the exhibit that there were quite a few people in that general area, you were able to to hear this engine over all the noise and chaos that was going on at that at that time? Yes, absolutely. Would it be fair to say that there were hundreds, even thousands of people present at the parade that day? Hundreds for sure in my area, sure. In your general area, hundreds? Yes. Would it be fair to say that hundreds of people can get pretty loud? Yes. Um, to back up real, really quick to the um, mechanical issue again, you, you may mention to uh, sounding like the engine was sputtering. Do you recall that? Yes. Uh, can you define to the jury what you mean by stuttering, uh, sputtering? I heard noises that sounded like a, almost like a popping, which at the time I didn't know what it was. I thought it was possibly mechanical related. In retrospect, it may have been impacts of the vehicle hitting things. I don't know. I don't know which it was. It would be fair. Do you, do you think it would be fair to say that if that is pursuant to the actual engine, how could it? How could that have anything to do with something being struck? If that's engine, that's inside of the vehicle. Can you repeat the question? I'm not sure what the specific question was. The mechanical issues that you are describing was pretty much geared towards engine trouble. Would that be fair to say? A sputtering engine? A it, high was, pitch? it was very high pitched. So it, it could be a, a mechanical thing or it could be the engine or the transmission being like in the wrong gear so that it's sounding much higher. From the... Uh, well, let me back up. From your recollection, do you recall there being any tents to the vehicle? Like tinted windows or anything? I don't recall. Can we pull up uh, Exhibit 9? Would it be fair to say from this still shot depiction that there are in fact tinted windows of the vehicle that you identify? It does appear that the windows in the back are tinted. So you don't see any tinted windows on the side too? Yes, when I mean back, I mean driver's door back. Uh, so, I, so, I apologize, so, I, I didn't know what you meant by that. Okay. Back driver's side window and the window, the immediate window after that as well. Would it be fair to say that there, from this picture, there are two tinted windows that you can visibly see. Would that be fair to say? Yes. You can take that down. Do you know if anyone uh, filed a claim in this incident? I don't understand the question. Um, filed a claim like uh, seeking to be an injured party. Objection. Grounds. Sustained. Uh, working in law enforcement. Um, have you at any point seen uh, the complaint in this matter? Objection. Grounds. Relevance. Grounds. Or a rule team answer if he's able. A complaint regarding this case? Yes. No. Do you know if there's a plaintiff in this case? Objection. Grounds. Relevance. Grounds. Sustained. Case. I sustain the objection. Okay, thank you. you don't have to answer. Right. Do you even know if there is a plaintiff in this matter? Same objection. Grounds. Sustained. Being in law enforcement for as long as you have, are you aware that there has to be a, an injured party to bring a claim? Objection. Grounds. Argumentative. Sustained. Also mistakes the law. In any of your uh, investigations dur during your career, 
were you ever made aware at any time that the state of Wisconsin can be a plaintiff in a matter? Objection, relevance. Sustained. Uh, you testified that you're getting paid today as you sit there, correct? That is correct. By the city of Franklin? Yes. Okay. State of Wisconsin is not cutting that check. The objection, hearsay. Overruled. Objection, okay. speculative. Um, overruled. You may answer. <coughs> correct. It's just the city of Franklin's paying no one else. Do you get paid more money if there's a guilty verdict? Objection, hearsay. Overruled. It's not hearsay. You may answer. No. Direct your attention to Exhibit 132 on the screen. One last time, I'd like you to draw an X to depict where you and your family were standing, approximately. Objection. Uh, answered numerous times already at this point. I'd like to preserve this as an exhibit. Go since ahead. He's done it so many times. Can we save that as Exhibit 132A and I move that into evidence? Objection. Relevancy. It answered numerous times. Exhibit 132 is received. 132A. Sorry, 132A. Thank you. Objection. Overruled. This is the approximate location uh, on cross-examination where you were asked about your position and whether or not you were 10 feet from the vehicle. Do you remember that line of questioning? Yes. When the vehicle was 10 feet away from you, is this where it was on Main Street? Objection. Overall, you may answer. Speculative. It's clearly not 10 feet. It would. The juror will disregard the comment made by Mr. Brooks. Um, it's not testimony. The witness may answer. I don't consent to being called that name. Objection to that, for the record. Could you repeat the question one more time, please? When the vehicle was 10 feet away from you, is this, as it's depicted right now in the video, is this where the vehicle was at that time? Objection. Hearsay. Overruled. Grounds would overrule your honor. He may answer. The vehicle at this point would still be east of my location. Okay. Let's go frame by frame a few more frames, please. <laughs> Is the vehicle now closer to the approximate location where it was near you and your family? Objection. Yep. Hearsay. Overruled. Yes. You described this video camera as being several hundred feet away from your location, is that right? Approximately. In your opinion, if the driver's body were hanging out the window at this point in the video, could we see it on the video? In my opinion, no. Okay. Just to clarify, what, if anything, was between the group of, the Catholic group, and the south curb of Main Street as the SUV drove through that area. Objection leading. Overruled. I believe that there was nothing in that space. It would be an open space. And you testified that you saw the SUV veer from left to right. Is that correct? Objection. Speaking to you. Overruled. You may answer. That is correct. In that last portion of the video, did you see the vehicle veer from left to right? Yes. Okay. In your description of a mechanical problem, you talked about um, the engine revving in what sounded like a high gear, is that right? Yes. And almost as though it were stuck in the wrong gear. Yes. You're not a mechanic, are you? No. Based on your limited knowledge of how vehicles work, if a, ve if a vehicle is stuck in the wrong gear, do you know if the brakes still work? Based on my knowledge, I would say yes, it sh they should still work. Your initial opinion that there may have been a mechanical problem, that changed at some point, didn't it? Objection. Yes. Speckly to you. Overruled. Yes. Why, why did that opinion change? Objection leading. Um, overruled, he may answer. It changed when I saw the driver and his body language. What was that body language? What did you see? Objection leading. 
overrule. You may answer. I would describe them as being in an excited state, um, not in a state of panic. More, again, excited or almost happy about what was going on, not panicked or scared. Well, yeah, thank you, Your Honor. All right, thank you, sir. You may step down. Sir, how are you employed? The city of uh, Wauwatosa also Police Department. What county is that in? It's in Milwaukee. Not Waukesha? Correct. Do you recall where you were on the afternoon of November 21st, 2021? Yes, I was at the Waukesha Christmas Parade. In downtown Waukesha? Yes. What were you doing there? I was uh, attending the parade uh, with my family. My daughters were walking in the parade with their dance team. Were you on duty? No. We walked back to the high, uh, middle school parking lot where my wife had parked. My um, youngest daughter left with her and then my older daughter and I continued to walk toward my vehicle. What happened as you were walking towards your vehicle? On the east side of the sidewalk, I uh, saw an SUV driving behind the houses on the west side of Maple, and uh, I just assumed it was driving in an alley or a, a driveway. Um, as I lost visual of the SUV, it was driving behind houses, I heard a crash. The vehicle then emerged a little bit further south from behind one of the residences there and drove down the driveway of that residence toward the street, toward my daughter and I. Um, and then what happened? I saw that the front end of the SUV was severely damaged and uh, put two and two together, thought the damage was from the crash I had just heard. I was standing across the street from it and then it came to a stop. Um, I saw the, the driver of the vehicle exit the vehicle <coughs> Uh, he came around to the front of the vehicle, looked at it, and yelled, fuck, and uh, appeared to be panicked, went back and got items out of the driver's side of the vehicle, and then ran southbound. The vehicle that you're talking about, do you remember what color it was? Uh, it was a maroon Ford Escape. You already said it was across the street. Do you remember approximately how many feet it would have been between you and the driver? Protection, Overruled. You may answer. Uh, if I had to guess, maybe 50 feet at most. Could you just could you describe the lighting conditions at that time in terms of sunlight and street lamps, if there were any? Objection. Yeah, was, uh, overruled. You may answer. It was pre-dusk. I would describe it as. How would you describe the uh, the physical appearance of the driver? Uh, well, he just looked to be kind of in a panic. Obviously, I just <coughs> thought he was involved in a crash, and uh, he was wearing a gray hooded sweatshirt and blue jeans. What about race? I would take his Likely to. Um, overruled, he may answer. <coughs> I would have described him as a light-skinned African-American or possibly a Spanish <coughs> male. And you've seen photographs of Daryl Brooks in, in other contexts, is that correct? Objection. Yes. I do not consent to being called that name, nor do I know that individual. And it's Go ahead, you may answer the question. Speculative. It's not speculative. Clearly. Yes. The person you saw get out of the driver's seat of that SUV on November 21st, do you see that person in the courtroom today? Yes. Objection is hearsay. How he's speaking as a, a first I hand witness. Um, overruled. I believe he answered, but could you state it again? Yes, I see him. He's sitting at the defense table wearing a suit with a blue tie and a white surgical mask. And just to be thorough, uh, could we please have Mr. Brooks remove his mask for a moment? Please. Mr. Brooks, please remove your mask. Thank you. The record to reflect the mask has been removed. How confident are you in your identification today? 100%. Is your identification in court today colored in any way by seeing pictures of Mr. Brooks uh, in other contexts? Objection, speculative. Um, overruled, he may answer. No. Can you describe the difference, if any, between Mr. Brooks's appearance today and his appearance on November 21st? Objection, hearsay, and speculative. 
Um, it's neither one of those things. The objection is overruled. The witness may answer. Objection is irrelevant. It is relevant. He may answer. Not if he identified me already, so he said. Mr. Brooks, please. The objection's been overruled. <coughs> the witness may answer. He's got very short hair right now, and he didn't then. What does it look like on November 21st? Objection. Overruled, you may answer. Brother Vinci. Go ahead, you may answer, sir. He had longer hair. I'm going to ask that we put up for the witness only exhibit number 65, please. Go ahead. Do you recognize that video? Yes. What does it show? Uh, it shows me walking with my dog Elvis and walking with my oh. oldest daughter Ava. Is that an accurate depiction of that scene as you saw it that day? Yes. Overruled. Yes. Move, move exhibit. Answer. Yes. Thank you. Move exhibit 65 into evidence and ask to publish. Exhibit 65 has received permission to publish as granted. Objection. Relevancy. Overruled. Could you circle yourself for us? Thank you. We can clear that. Pause there. Could you draw a line down Prospect for us? Do you see any vehicles on Prospect at this point? I see two. Could you uh, circle the yes. one with clearly more than two vehicles on Prospect? I'll, clear, I'll clarify. No, you said on Prospect. He answered. His answer may stand. <coughs> where's Where's Prospect? Where, where are you? Referring? He already drew a line. The witness would redraw the line for Mr. Brooks. Thank you. Go ahead. Do either of those vehicles have appearing to you today to have an inoperable headlight? Yes. Which one? If you could circle it, please. It's just leading. It's not leading. He may answer. Thank you. We can clear that. Pause. Do you see on the video right now the person you recall being the driver of that vehicle? Yes. Could you please circle that person for us? I'd like to mark and preserve this annotation as Exhibit 65A, please, and move it into evidence. Objection. You're saying. The objection is overruled. Exhibit 65A is received. What did you do next? I attempted to call 911 to report a crash. Did you get through on the first call? No. What about the second? No. Third? No. Did you eventually get through? Fourth time. Objection hearsay. I'm sorry, I didn't um, hear the answer. Um, the objection is overruled. Could you please restate your answer, sir? I believe I got through on the fourth attempt. And that's when you reported what you saw? Yes. Uh, can we pull that? Uh, Exhibit back up again. Would it be fair to say that from the position that you're in, approximately here, and the side street being here, you can see down this street from the position you're in? No. So how were you able to see if a vehicle would be coming from this way from the position you're at. I didn't see the vehicle driving on prospect. I saw it driving behind the houses through the yards. So you were able to see the vehicle behind houses? Between houses, behind You said houses. behind. You said behind. Right, through the yards, behind the houses. And you were able to see that from where you were? Yes. Can we take those marked lines and step down? Can you play it a little bit? I'll tell you when to pause. Would it be fair to say from... Do you want to pause? Uh, no, not yet. Just You, you can let it play. I, I'll say I think it's 36 seconds, so... Would it be fair to say from... Well, hold on. The video's showing, so wait till it's done playing and then ask a question. Or have us pause where you want it paused. Pause. 
So let's pause that 18 seconds for the record. Would it be fair to say that in the 18 seconds shown to this point, you're pretty much just walking the dog, moving around, just walking normal. You, you don't make any sudden moves to the left to look or you don't stop in your tracks or anything. You're just walking along. Would that be fair to say? Yes. Why didn't you immediately stop in, stop in your tracks and say you just heard something? Why do you just keep moving as if you heard anything, nothing? I just turned my head to see if I could see anything and I didn't see anything. And so you just kept moving? Correct. So basically it was just like, oh, doo -doo 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 -doo, walking the dog. Yes. Why so nonchalant? When the vehicle emerged from the back of the house, I saw that it was damaged and then in my mind, I knew what I had heard. With all respect, that wasn't the question. Why so nonchalant at that point? I didn't think it was uh, anything of great emergency at that point. I just figured that an intoxicated driver may have just struck another vehicle in the back of that alley and now he was gonna take off and run. And being a, a being in law enforcement, why would you not investigate that if you heard something crash? Why, being being an officer of the law, why would you not investigate that if you heard that? I was with my daughter, and I would in no way put her in harm's way. Well, I I would think it would be fair to say that you can't handle yourself. You you're obviously a law uh, 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 officer of the law. You're trained to be able to handle yourself. Would it be fair to say that you could have invested, at least investigated the sound that you heard, the sound like a crash, at least? Objection. Grounds. S sustained. It's also a compound question. Please rephrase. So all these thoughts, maybe it was just a drunk driver <laughs> and they're going to they're gonna run anyway. And all these thoughts, and that never piqued your interest to investigate? Sometimes being a good witness is the best thing to do. That's why I called 911 to report it immediately. Now that that's fair, but being an officer of the law, you're right there. Again, objection. That's not a question. Also asked and answered. Also argumentative. S sustained as to the form of the question. What, you don't need to answer, sir. Next question, please. What if someone may have been hurt at that point? You don't think you would have an obligation to investigate if someone someone may have been injured at that point? That's why I called 911. In that entire video, is it fair to say that you did not reach for a phone and take out a phone from your pockets or anything in any way? That I can't, fair to say? I can't, I, I can't tell if I did from the video itself. I know. So when I did you make the call? At some point after you started running. Who is you? The defendant, the driver of the vehicle. So how, how long after you saw the driver of the vehicle did you make the 911 call? Within seconds, I believe. Is it fair to say that we don't see that on the video? The video is very small at that point. It's hard to Is see. it fair to say we don't see you do that on the video? Yes. Can we pull the video back up? Can you take it to 27 seconds and pause? Maybe maybe 28. I'm, I may be mistaken. Maybe just go one more second. Maybe to 28. Or you know what? No. Keep your pause right there. What do you see right there? I'm not. I don't understand. Do you see anything right there? An individual? Uh, anything? Do you see anything right there? It's Inside hard to the tell circle? from that picture. What I can see. Can you move it? Can we blow it up a little bit or move it closer? Just a little bit? I don't know that it can be zoomed in. Does that can state it, have that capability? In? So we can zoom in as long as the defense is okay with dispensing with any technological foundation issues there. But we can zoom in. We have the ability to do that. Do we, would you like it zoomed in? What, what do you mean by not say that again? I'm sorry. We can zoom in if you want to. Can you zoom in just a little bit? 
Just, just a smidgen. Can you see anything there? It looks like something white. I don't know if that's the driver. Looks like something white. Yes, it's light colored. White color what? It's light colored. Light colored, but you did say white. Is that fair to say that you just said white? I just did say white. Would, would I just circle right there? Would you, from your recollection, say that that was the driver you saw? I don't know what that is at this point. You don't, it's you just don't know? just a paused video. It could be a glare, it could be a person, I don't know. It. You could play it again. Well, let's play it again. From the 27th. The, stop right there. Did you see that whatever you said you didn't know what it was, could have been a person, could have been something else? Did you see it move from the position that it was before? Yes. And you also identified that that was white, right? I did say that. And would it be fair to say that you saw the driver in gray? Would that be fair to say? Yes. Take the circle off. You also stated that you were about 50 feet from the vehicle. Well, you added the vehicle in until you said maybe 50 feet and then depending on the length of the vehicle. Would that be fair to say? Yes. And from where, from where you are here, that would be 50 feet from, approximately 50 feet from X to X? Approximately. And you were able to see the driver and a description from where you from where you're standing now to where the other X is. Yes. And you were able to make out the race of the driver from where you were at. I guessed. You guessed. Raced. So you're not you're not for for certain. I wasn't for certain for certain at that time. So what conclusion were you coming to at that point? Just an educated guess or can you explain further? How, how, what? Would it be fair to say that your guess could have been inaccurate? Could have been. And you made reference to the driver's hair. Would that be fair to say? In my testimony, yes. You, you brought up the hair is what I'm saying. You, you said long hair. Would that be fair to say? Yes. And you will be able to see here if you describe the driver wearing a hoodie if it's hanging out of the hoodie yes well you didn't you didn't say all fairness you didn't say it was hanging out of the hoodie you just referred to the hair yes is it hold on there's been an objection i believe the witness understood the question so i'll overrule the objection his answer may stand next question is it any possible way you could have gotten a description from the news reports instead of what you actually recall? No. And how did you determine that? In the <coughs> report I gave, in my uh, statement, I described what I saw that day, not what I saw in the news. And you also described two different colors of dress. Once, once you said gray and one you said white. Would that be fair to say? I said that the item in the video appeared to be white. Did you not say that the item moved? As you say item, did you not say the item moved from where it was at? Yes. Would it be fair to say that there can be no movement to an item if it wasn't a, a, a person? Yes. A person that you described wearing white? On the video screen it appeared white. It appeared light colored or white. Would it be fair to say that you said white? That was your first? Yes. At any time in that video, could you see here? In the video? In the video. You can't see very much in the video. No. After making the 911 call, did you return back to the scene where you noticed the vehicle? I believe they asked me what the license plate was, and I couldn't see it from where I was at, so I walked back over to give that to them. So you, you couldn't see the uh, the license plate of the vehicle from where you, where you were at? There was no license plate on the front of the vehicle, 
so I could not see it. So you came back to investigate if there was a license plate that you can identify? Yes. Did you investigate which you may have heard the vehicle strike? No. Any reason why not? By that time, a large crowd had gathered and there were sirens. I could hear them in the distance and the police were, were responding rather quickly. So you didn't take the opportunity to see if anyone, from the, from saying that you heard a loud crash, you didn't take the opportunity to investigate if anyone may, may have been hurt no. from that loud crash? I didn't know. Any reason why not? No reason. At any time, have you read or saw a complaint in this matter? No, just my report. Any other officers that came to the scene because you made reference to officers were, was responding by the time you came back to give more details to the dispatcher, more officers were arriving. Uh, do you recall if any, any one of those officers investigated the loud crash you heard? I'm unaware. Do you recall any of them asking you a, a, a description of what you saw? I didn't speak to any officers on scene that day. Any reason why not? I just seeing, left. Seeing as how, seeing as how that you made the initial 911 call, I, I'm sure the officers were probably responding by that time anyway, but seeing as how you made the 911 call, you didn't collaborate with the other officers to try to, you know, like piece together what you may have saw? I'll object to the characterization that that was the first 911 call. Sustained. I, didn't, I didn't say first, I said he made the initial 911 call. Initial means first, so sustained us oh, to the form of the question. Did you learn any additional information uh, that you don't recall having via social media or the news after you had already made your report? I don't understand the question. Did you learn any additional information after you had already given your report? Learn information about what? About uh, the description of the driver, what had happened at the parade, any anything. Well, originally I had no idea what had happened at the parade. I thought it was just, I witnessed a hit and run crash. I had no clue what had happened at the parade. So you, you, you just said now you witnessed a hit and run crash, but you also said that you didn't investigate the crash that you heard. Correct. So how would you characterize, characterize it as a hit and run crash if you never investigate what you heard? Well, because I heard a crash and then the driver ran. Well, you also stated to be fair that you didn't investigate with the crash. So how was it any way to know what you were witnessing if you didn't investigate? Because I heard a crash and I saw the driver run. Would it be fair to say that the, from the assumption that there was a hit and run crash, as you say, the only way to know for sure where the crash came from would, would be to investigate it. Would that be fair to say? <coughs> yes. And you stated for the record that you did not do that, correct? Yes. So why would you report it as a hit and run crash if you were not sure what it was? Well, based on my training experience as a crash investigator, that's what I thought it was. So as far as you can recall, you were the only one that heard the crash? As far as I know, yes. You testified that you didn't investigate the sound of this crash, correct? Yes. Were you off duty that day? Yes. When you're off duty, do you carry a police radio with you? Objection that, that is uh, irrelevant. It's an officer of the law. Overruled. He may answer. No. So you if you did get into a pickle, you wouldn't be able to call for backup, would you? Objection. The speculative still has a cell phone. 
It's not speculative. He may answer the question. Correct. Uh, your daughter, the one that we saw in Exhibit 65, I believe. 65? 65. 65. Um, is she a sworn law enforcement officer? Objection. Irrelevant. Overruled. He may answer. No. At the time you heard the crash but didn't investigate it, did you know that the vehicle that you saw had been involved in hitting dozens of people on Main Street minutes Object earlier? Objection. Uh, asked during cross. Answered. Overruled. He may answer. I had no idea. When the driver got out, and just to clarify again, who, who was the driver? The defendant. Daryl Brooks. Daryl Brooks. Objection. I don't consent to being called that name. And Mr. Brooks, I'm sorry. I don't consent to being called that name. Um, on this issue of the white clothing, can we please show for everybody uh, exhibit number 120, which has previously been published? Go ahead. You see the person who appears to be behind the driver's wheel of the red SUV in that picture? Objection. What is the relevancy? Overruled. He may answer. Yes. How would you describe the color of the shirt that that person's wearing? Light gray or white. All right. I am going to excuse the jurors for a, and actually take a recess. All rise for the jury, please. All right, we are in recess.